Penn State has arrived in Tampa just a few short days from the Nittany Lions New Year's Day clash with Arkansas. But they'll be without some serious firepower when they kick off at the Outback Bowl. Safety Jaquan Brisker and receiver Jahan Dotson both announcing today they'll be skipping the bowl game to focus on the NFL draft. Arguably the team's two best players on both sides of the ball. So it's going to be a much different Penn State team than the one we saw in the regular season. Brisker was named a second team All-American for his work in the secondary this fall, while Dodson was named to the third team. Time for some guys next up to get a little more shine in the Sunshine State. The game kicks off at noon on New Year's Day. Meanwhile, Penn State men's basketball getting ready for its return to play on Wednesday night against Delaware State. The team's been dealing with a bit of a COVID outbreak, causing the last two games to be canceled, both of which were non-conference bouts. A bit of a hitch in Micro Shrewsbury's plans. His Nittany Lions aren't even 5-5 five and five through 10 games, but this is sports in the COVID era. No choice but to roll with the punches. Guys love playing games. Like, they didn't want to miss two games. Uh, but there were also some guys that were in a pretty good rhythm. They were playing pretty well. They were playing good minutes. And now, you know, there's that fear of, like, you know, am I not going to shoot the ball the same? Or is my conditioning going to, you know, you know, drop a little bit. Um, those are all things that, you know, you have to try and calm during this time that we have right now. The women's team also dealing with COVID issues as well. Their upcoming game against Iowa was postponed this morning. It's been a wild few seasons for the AHL and the Hershey Bears, but this one might be the wildest one yet. All of the postponements, players moving up to Washington, then coming back down to Hershey. And now the NHL is starting to build taxi squads, helping rosters that are depleted from COVID. Five Bears called up to the Capitals today, three to the taxi squad. Hershey calling up three players from their ECHL affiliate to help fill the void. Meanwhile, the Bears are in Wilkes Bar tonight, down one nothing in the second. Top of your screen, it's Ryan Domowski beating the goalie blocker side for the goal. Taking another look at it, point blank range, top corner, tied at one going into the third period, and the captain is going to call his own number. Matt Molson on the power play in front of the net. He's going to get that deflection, and the Bears have not yet lost to the Penguins this year. They are 4-0. 4-1 oh, is your final tonight. If the season ended today, the Eagles would be playoff bound and facing the Cowboys. However, there's still two weeks to go in the regular season, but a promising sign. The Eagles losing Miles Sanders after he broke his hand yesterday, but the Eagles not skipping a beat, throttling the Giants in the second half. 3-3 three to three the score at the half, 34-10 to 10 the final to push the Eagles to 8-7. and seven. They've won five of their last six. If you can be in that trajectory where you're doing this a little bit more each day and you can truly live by that and just know that I'm not thinking about, right, I'm not thinking when the outside world might be thinking about playoffs. I'm thinking about how I'm going to get better today, to get better tomorrow, to get better the next day, to get better the next day, so we can go 1-0 and this week. And, I, and it's just staying in the moment and going a little bit at a time. So the Birds control their own destiny. Two games left, starting with Washington and then wrapping up the season against those bitter rivals in the Cowboys. That's your Check on Sports. I'm Ben Shad. We're getting closer to kickoff for the Outback Bowl. Head coaches taking the podium today, but the main headline continues to be the number of Nittany Lions opting out of this final game. Derek Tangelo announcing this morning he won't be playing either on Saturday. Arnold Ebichetti did the same yesterday, and Jaquan Brisker did the same on Monday. Six total players now won't be in Tampa for the game. That's not how bowl season used to be. It's also going to give us a, a really good kind of picture of, of what our future is going to be. It's going to be guys that are going to get a bunch of reps in this game. Uh, that that maybe hadn't in, in um, you know throughout the season. So there, there's some challenges, no doubt about it. Our guys are excited, and I think there's also some tremendous leaders that are out there that that you know we're dependent on and are going to need to step up for us. There's, there's no doubt about it. Kickoff is Saturday at noon. 
Pitt will kick off the Peach Bowl against Michigan State tomorrow. Both teams without their best players. Panthers quarterback Kenny Pickett and Spartans running back Kenneth Walker both opting out. But a huge opportunity for the Pitt program, chasing its first 12 win season since 1976. Doesn't matter who's playing quarterback, this team knows there's a lot to play for tomorrow. Pat Narduzzi's letting his guys know it. Yeah, we've talked all year about being 1-0, and and we got a great opportunity as well uh, to get number 12 and be the, the second team in school history to, to ever get to 12 wins. And, and there's been some good football played at uh, Pitt, you know, nine national championships. So that says a lot about who they are. And, and uh, our guys can set, you know, set it in stone legacy. You talk about coming back for the rest of your life to the University of Pittsburgh, you know, being that ACC champion, you know, having 12 wins, being Peach Bowl champion. So that's the goal. Our guys are locked in. Uh, we're we're going to have a battle on our hands, that's for sure. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. The Hershey Bears in their long history have never started a season 5-0 against rival Wilkes-Barre. Tonight, a chance on their home ice to rewrite the record books. Scoreless after the first period, a different story in the second. Tobias Geiser, top shelf. His first career AHL goal, it's a thing of beauty. And that strike gets the Bears on top first. And it's going to open up the floodgates later on in the period. Marcus Vela right in front of the net. He'll also bag his first AHL goal. They go back to back. And Hershey goes back to back to back to back to back. Five straight for the first time ever to start a season six to one the final. Some high school hoops to round out the new year. More scores rolling across the bottom of your screen. Lower Dolphin girls hosting Harrisburg, picking this one up in the second half. Cougars come up with the block, but goes right to Lauren Wallers. She cleans it up and gets two for Lower Dolphin. On the Harrisburg side, Anaya Robinson has the makings of a star. Everything looking so easy for her. Gets the tough runner off the window. And then at the top of the key right there, a little step back three. She's going to go off in this one. But the Falcons able to hold them off. Justice Hollenbach coming up big in the fourth for LD. Members bounce on the mid-range shot there. And some nice passing leads to yet another bucket. Lower Dolphins going to win this one 50-34. to Different Falcons, but on the same court. Cedar Crest taking on Twin Valley. Brooks Shutter here is going to cut to the basket. Gets rewarded for the tough finish. Probably a foul, but no call on the play. A few minutes later, a kick out to Sarah Batra. Out near the arc, connects. She's going to go off in this game. And then Cedar Crest goes back to finding the cutters. Sound basketball. Mallory Diedrich lays it in. Cedar Crest wins this one 40 to 34. And the Falcons will play the other Falcons tomorrow in the holiday tournament final. And that's your check on sports. I'm Ben Shad.